Yeah, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Figure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tomin. Uh, oh, hi, hi, I'm <laughs> Matt. <laughs> yeah, so for today, we will have Matt here, who's a practicing lawyer for five years now, who specializes in family law, to discuss the topic of what exactly does a family lawyer do. So, as an introduction, could you tell us your background? So, I did uh, LLB for, uh, with uh, UOL, and then uh, CLP, then after that, I started off doing uh, pupillage at uh, screen. I did civil uh, banking late and also defamation and land matters. Then um, I thought it's probably not, okay, I thought I want to be exposed to something else. Mm -hmm. So um, I like family from even when I was a student. Uh, I enjoyed it when I studied it. So I, I looked for a family firm. Then I went to my ex firm and I just came out on my own, yeah, about. Uh, few months ago. What should come in mind when we talk about family law? I think there are two things. One of it would be the general perception of how people perceive a uh, family practice is and the other one would be how lawyers who specialize in family practice uh, would think. So I think generally um, people would feel that it is a very emotional area, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. uh, very difficult clients to deal with. I think that's all true, uh, but probably not as dramatic as how people think it is. <laughs> yeah, and that's why you would hear a lot of civil practitioners or civil lawyers who say, hey, don't do family laws because that's really difficult to, to handle. And when they say that, most of the time they're talking about the client. Uh, but um, uh, like me and a lot of my colleagues who do mainly fam family law. I think we, we all have a, a different way of dealing with our clients. Yeah, and then it would reduce the dramatic factor. <laughs> yeah, a bit. Yes. Like, can you tell us then, like, like, what makes the people say it's dramatic? Then, like, like maybe a few examples, like the cases you have handled, like. To illustrate like how dramatic it is. Mm, okay, I I think it is more dramatic than others because it concerns um the clients themselves. Mm -hmm. It is their family, it's their life. It is about people who they love or loved. So that's why when things come to their children, their spouse, it is very close to them, and that's why it's especially. Uh, emotional or dramatic, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I have dealt with abuse cases, allegations about sexual abuse, and then it is something that if you're a civil lawyer, you may not have encountered. Like you, 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 you get a call uh, saying police are now at the client's place, and then you just have to rush there. So, so sounds like criminal, but yeah, then. If it is about sexual abuse or physical abuse, then um, the social welfare office will be involved, hospital will be involved. So there are all these different things that you are dealing with uh, that would keep on happening or the, the facts of the case would keep on developing all the time. So like you have to have the stomach for it mm. uh, if you want to do uh, contested family matters. Yeah. So, so like like when you say it's like when the police are involved then does it become a criminal case or is it still your family case? It could be both. So like um, I think before this we talk about uh, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So domestic violence can be part of the reasons why the marriage has broken down irretrievably. Uh, but uh, domestic violence is also a crime. So under domestic violence act you read it together with penal code. So like let's say physical abuse, let's say slapped you or, or you break your rib or something, then that could be uh, causing hurt under a uh, uh, penal code. So if you're acting for the complainant or the victim, then you would have to deal with, it depends like, on whether you are getting another set of lawyers to be involved, or otherwise then you have to deal with 
are not only the family court matter but also uh, the police investigations. You have to push the police in, uh, to investigate this and uh, probably you want to get an interim protection order from the magistrate's court so that's a protection that um, the victim can get from the Domestic Violence Act uh -huh. or the other one would be you would want to push for a charge to be preferred against the perpetrator so all these are like part of the strategy when you are dealing with the family case so how that would support your, uh, your, your case later when you want to deal with the divorce issue Oh. Yeah, that's why it is like many different aspects of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, then what aspects of family law makes you devoted to it? Like, instead of going to another area of law. Uh, I think I think I like the. Okay, first I like the subject matter. <laughs> so I I like family law itself, and and my co conscience is clear. So when it comes to like children, you know, uh, the law is always uh. That the paramount consideration is the welfare of the children, uh, the best interest of the child. So um, whatever the court decides, uh, is about what is the best thing to do for the child. So to me, like my conscience is clear, and then this is just a principle. But then the facts are very different. So you can have this one that talks about mosquito bites. You can have this one that talks about uh, bruises and this or that or school, international school, this one or, or swimming activities, all these things and how you want to link all these like very mundane pieces of facts uh -huh. uh, into a presentation in court to tell the judge that hey my client is a better parent or um, having my client having custody of the child uh, is the better decision to be made. So uh, that's fun, and also the the constantly developing and evolving facts. That's fun. So uh, you know we have exchange of affidavits like every two weeks. You know, oh. If there's an application, so then you have two weeks to reply and all that. So we would usually have new things uh, from the time that we received the affidavit, from when we filed our affidavit. So sometimes we would have. Uh, new things to include up until the 11th hours. So like that kind of thing is stressful but to me it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I understand. So like would you say that like, because it's contentious and you say it's constantly developing so it's not in a way procedural that like, that that like there's always things to add on. So would you say like people who like drama per se like when they see Korean drama, do you think people who like these kind of things would do well in family law? I think, I think yes and no. So, uh, you must be interested in the drama. <laughs> yeah. and, but you must also uh, be able to rise above it and not be affected by the drama. Mm. So because otherwise then, I don't think you are doing any good for your client. You know, there are some people who, who are very non-confrontational who don't like conflict, mm -hmm. then family law is definitely not something for you. Or the whole litigation is probably not something for you. Yeah, like if you stay away from conflict, then uh, that's not what you should do. Yeah, so family is like full of conflict and uh, emotions. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. so as someone who's a sole proprietor, what would you say about the market of this area like the employability, the saturation and the pay wage? Wow, that's someone <laughs> that's something I should ask me about. No, okay. Uh okay let's talk about this. I think like you know people say after MCO then there are a lot of cases coming in and all that. Uh, let's say I'm not getting that piece of the pie. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. But I think like um a lot of the things um even all my colleagues, whatever they are getting even after MCO, um, there were already issues before that. So um, if you want to talk about the employability and all that or market share, um, the, the thing that I can say is that for family matter, it is recession proof. You know like for debt recovery, that's something that would pick up after recession mm. or during recession. A lot of people are chasing for you know money to, to, to come back. And family matters, that's something that 
uh, we have a little bit of seasons lah, like probably before Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing because like people want to clear clear this thing before Chinese New Year, so then they don't have to explain uh, what happened with the family. So so like there's a little bit of that there, but otherwise all year round, I think it is that. Uh, so but employability wise, I'm not sure because most family firms or most firms who specialize in contested family matters are usually smaller firms yeah big firms um, I think the one that I can think of the bigger one the bigger uh, bigger civil firm is probably uh, China and Arif and uh, Chui and Ko and China and Arif uh, Nicole Wee. Uh, otherwise actually most of us are from smaller firms mm. yeah then uh, smaller firms then in terms of employability, it really depends on the vacancy. Yeah, but then if you are talking about the market, how is it? Uh, then, like I said, all year round, then there are family cases, there are urgent cases. We do a lot of urgent matters, you know, like a child is going to be removed from the country, uh, probably uh, today, tomorrow, or something. So then you need to draft the application and you need to put in the application like right away. So that's something that's quite common for us. Yeah. Then, can I, how does a day at work sounds like then, like when you say it's like there's this urgent, this urgent? Like I think a good day would be that you get to go into office and do your work and like do your subs or you want to prepare applications because the deadlines are not there yet. Uh -huh. I think that holds true for many law lawyers. Uh, a bad day would be that you set out to, you know, that's what happened, you know, sometimes like uh, I'm thinking, okay, I have deadlines tomorrow or the day after. Today I'm going to clear this A, B, C. But after I get into office, I didn't get to do any of it because then there's like this call or this happened and then I have to deal with all these other urgent stuff. So that's bad. Mm. The worst for me was... Uh, having to come in and do work uh, on Sunday morning and then I only get home I only get to leave and go back home uh, on a Monday like 10 something Huh? You stay overnight? Yeah, staying overnight or pulling an all-nighter all-nighter is quite like a thing that you need to deal with if you are dealing with like highly contested matters yeah, uh, like you pull an all-nighter, you did all this application and then come out but then the next morning you have another matter, another matter to go to so you need to go to court and then you're looking like a zombie so uh, that happens, yeah oh. Oh. Uh, Okay, so be, be <laughs> resilient Jerry, from, like, from all this work, then, what have been the highlights of your career then? done so much, definitely there will be some moments that will be cycle. Highlight as in like winning or losing is it? No, maybe not to say losing or winning but maybe a favourable outcome uh, or milestones like that. Favourable outcome then winning lah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think okay, uh, let me put it this way, I, I'm only a fifth year now mm -hmm. but because I think it is actually not a very big practice area so uh, there are not many people who are really doing the highly contested uh, matrimonial uh, cases and because of this then I got to be exposed to uh, many different kind of cases like I have done conversion case about conversion so conversion to Muslim oh. and then um, unilateral converting of children dealt with uh, cases about sexual abuse so I've dealt with the hospital, the scan team how they uh, examined uh, children and all that I've dealt with matters about children in need of care and protection I've dealt with uh, domestic violence uh, I have done this with like very senior, uh, against very senior lawyers and uh, being able to argue uh, with them uh, or, or to, to being able to do a hearing with them on my own uh, at the pallet court. So, so all these are like something that's, that are 
kind of a highlight for me. Mm. Uh, so so like oh I get to do this on my own. I get to be shouted by the judges. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then uh and then, and then, and then you, you pull through and then like uh, okay so next time we then don't do this or you know like you learn from it. So that's something that I feel uh are highlights of my practice. Yeah. Then of course then breathing is fun lah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like like since you're talking about the topic of reading, do you have your own definition of success? Uh, okay, yes. I think for family cases, winning the case sometimes doesn't mean that you your client wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you could have a favorite decision, but it doesn't mean that your client gets what he or she wants. Or it doesn't mean that um, these things would be good for your client long term. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of time we try to settle. Because when we settle, there, there are, there's a lot of room that we can move around, we can adjust, we can do things that fit our client's life and the arrangement. And it is about you winning some and losing some. Mm -hmm. For family, it's usually about that. You don't win all the way, you don't take everything or you don't lose everything. So like say custody, if you lose custody, you probably win some access, you have visitation rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so like win and lose, so it really depends on what, fit, what fits you the most or what fits your client the most. Yeah. So sometimes your client might not be able to see it because they were angry or emotional, they, they want to punish the other side. Then if you are more experienced, if you know what is the better decision, or the better arrangement for your client, I think that's where experience counts. That's where you can come in and probably suggest and advise, hey, probably this way is better. Like, why are you so hung up with this thing? Mm. Yeah, so things like that, yeah. So then, like, because you said, like, people, they are really, like, how bent on a certain perspective to, like, punish them. Then how do you manage your clients and to, like, so them to look at the long run rather than to, like, Okay, uh, I think building rapport is very important. So first, uh, you have to have a good relationship with your client. That's what I feel. Uh, some lawyers don't agree. But to me, I think um, for family cases, it's really you really need to work very closely with your client. And having a rapport, when your client trusts you, it's not about money or a house. When your client trusts you with her life, her children's lives, then that's where things would work better. So I think building the rapport and the trust is very important. When your client has the confidence in you, mm -hmm. then that can work better. So when these emotions cloud your client's mind, then you or what you say would matter to your client. As a last question, do you have any advice you would like to give to aspiring law students like who are keen on practicing family law? Okay, I think interest is very important. So um, if you are interested in the area, okay, you may think that you are interested but then you may not know how the area is. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, doing internship or trying it out is probably the only thing that you can do uh, to know whether or not you like it. If you are not interested in the area, you won't, you won't last. So I think uh, my advice would be to know what your interest is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to know what, what your interest, where your interest lies. Uh, is it going to be a civil litigation or family or criminal or even non-litigation you know, uh, matters? So, so, so you need to see where your interest is. is. The other one would be you need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. So just because you love drama or love fighting in court, you know, you see all those court dramas, it doesn't mean that you are cut up for it. Mm. Yeah, because um, you may know the law, but uh, presenting it is another thing. And you know, knowing when to stop, you know, like reading the judges, reading your opponents, reading your witnesses, all these are advocacy skills that 
uh, you may not be able to learn during study and you can only know when you try out. Yeah. So you need to know two, thing, two things, interest and your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So it's like, basically to generalize this is like, to have an interest but to remain open because you may be interested in it but you may not like it and even if you may like it in the end, you may not be cut out for it. Yeah, like you, you say you like mm. IT, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you, you won't know, you won't know until you try it, like what I say, like I thought I like it but I, yeah. Oh, okay lah, <laughs> I'll try it like my features. <laughs> okay, that's about it for interview, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you for having me.